I think we can all agree that Blade needs a buff. Since the release of the game, not a single support has been designed with Blade in mind, and all his current best teammates function better without Blade. I've seen some posts recently about ideas to buff Blade, and this video is my take on the matter. Obviously, I'm not a game designer, but I'd still like to share some of my suggestions, maybe get a conversation going. But before I jump into my ideas of how to buff Blade, I want to start by identifying what are Blade's weaknesses. So for his cons, Blade's damage ceiling at the moment is not very high. He doesn't have any nuke numbers or front-loaded damage. He relies on taking multiple turns or acting as a sub-DPS in a dual carry setup. So most of his gameplay is going to be him slowly chipping away at enemies instead of this one large number. And part of why he feels weak compared to other characters is because there's no dedicated harmony support yet for him or, or like nihility support. There's not even a dedicated abundance support either. Basically, Blade has no dedicated supports whatsoever at the moment. All the current supports in the game leave something on the table. Sparkle and Branya have attack buffs that are pretty much useless on Blade, and there is the same issue with Robin. Ron May buffs break damage, and Blade isn't really the greatest toughness depleter in the game, so Super Break Blade is kinda trolling. Therefore, part of Ron May's kit is also slightly wasted. Hua Hua is a wind abundance character, but she buffs attack, so that's kind of wasted on Blade. Ting Yun buffs attack, and so on and so on. The fact that Blade is lacking a dedicated support at the moment means that he's fighting with training weights still on. As for having no nuking capability, it's because his damage is kind of split between his enhanced basic attack, his ultimate, and his follow-up attack. So they kind of divided his damage across three different abilities, and while they all deal respectable damage, that means none of them should be ignored. And so Blade becomes very expensive to build because he wants all his traces to be unlocked and all his traces to be maxed out, including his basic attacks. So you have to 10-10-10 Blade and get all his major and minor traces, which makes him one of the more expensive DPS characters because not all DPS characters need to level up everything. Some of them, for example, can ignore their basic attacks. So because every single part of Blade's kit contributes to his damage output, you can't skimp on any area like you can with other characters. What's worse about this is, because of how split his damage profile is, there currently exists no planar ornament set that can buff all three of his damage sources. His best planars right now are divided between Rudolent Arena and Inert Salsado, where Rudolent Arena buffs his enhanced basic attacks while Inert Salsado buffs his follow-up attack and his ultimate. Therefore, if you're going with either set, you're losing effectiveness because neither of these sets buff all three damage sources. Other DPS characters can make better use out of planers than Blade at the moment because either they have a dedicated set or the set's so general that it buffs the entire kit. For Blade at the moment, at E0, either Rudolent or Inert Salsado are perfectly usable on Blade. There's not much difference between the two of them. But for E1 and onwards, Inert Salsado starts to pull ahead because your ultimate starts to deal more damage, and then at E6, your follow-up becomes a gigantic source of damage. However, if you have a good Rulin set at the moment, it's not worth farming Inert Salsado because I believe one day a proper set can come out that will fully synergize with Blade's kit, but that might be Copium. Okay, continuing with Blade's many issues, his follow-up attack talent does not overstack. Other characters like Jade or Adventurine allow excess stacks to carry over, but that's not the case with Blade. This definitely sucks because with the addition of Jade, it's quite common to waste one of her bonus stacks, and that always feels bad when it happens. It also sucks if Blade is CC'd and has max stacks because if he continues getting hit, all those hits become wasted stacks. So if they ever decided to revamp Blade, having the ability to carry over excess stacks like it, it's a change that doesn't impact much but makes his quality of life so much better on the topic of crowd control hard cc will stop blade in his tracks because it'll prevent him from self-sustaining and could lead him to actually die in combat fu shuen or Huo Huo are characters currently that can prevent this from happening but neither of these teammates are ideal for blade fu shuen will steal attacks from blade and Huo Huo buffs attack so part of her kit loses value. Link's E2 also has one instance of CC prevention that could be used on Blade, 
But if you're slotting Lynx into your team, that's not a power move, it's more of a comfort move. So you're actually losing damage if you're replacing a support with Lynx. Gallagher can work here too, but you're also losing damage putting in Gallagher over another character. Blade also doesn't deplete much toughness meter, and he also doesn't have any universal toughness reduction, so this reduces his off element performance, which is already mediocre because of his lack of wind resistance shred. For zero cycling, Blade's biggest con is the fact that he has no way to taunt. Most Blade zero cycles rely on him getting hit as many times as possible in order to launch more follow-up attacks, but also to ensure that his supports don't die, because most of Blade zero cycles, they do not involve a sustained character. And because none of the current Harmony supports have a taunting ability and Blade himself has no inherent taunt ability, the only way to give Blade a taunt is with Yunli's Light Cone, which is certainly usable, but Blade's signature Light Cone is still higher damage in most instances, so there's still a trade-off there. And if you slot in Lynx for her taunt, then you're not really going for a zero cycle anymore because you traded a support for a healer. Okay, his final con is that his Eidolons are underwhelming. His E1 is okay for increasing single target damage on his ultimate, which is a reasonable damage increase, but it's not the best value for Jades. And the rest of his Eidolons are very mid until you reach E6. And his E6 is a very fun Eidolon because it opens up solo blade shenanigans and makes his follow-up attack much more of a factor in his playstyle. But even if E6 is a good Eidolon on its own, the fact that his other Eidolons are pretty bad makes his E6 much less impressive compared to competing E6 DPS characters. So if Blade is in such a rough state at the moment, how would I fix him? One easy change that is never going to happen is to allow his follow-up stacks to carry over. But because that involves changing his kit, which is already finalized, I know it's not going to happen. So instead, how I would improve his follow-up talent is to maybe introduce a character that can help him proc his follow-up attacks more reliably, similar to Jade. So imagine Farina was imported into Star Rail. You could have a teammate with summons who drain their teammate's HP every time the summons attack. This way you can generate a lot of stacks that won't overcap Blade. Because the problem with Jade is if he's at 4 stacks and he attacks, he'll get 2 more stacks from his attack and from Jade, but it will put him at 5 because he doesn't carry over the excess stack. So a, a character that has like 3 different summons who all drain HP when they attack could give Blade so many more stacks that won't exceed his limit. A character like Farina would be very good for Blade because not only does her kit synergize well with Blade, she's also an HP scaler, so there's likely going to be more HP related buffs. And if her summon mechanic also makes it into the game, then it makes Blade also able to dip into the summon meta. Another way to reliably have Blade trigger his follow-up attack is to have an abundance character that can transfer DOTs from teammates onto a single character. So instead of cleansing your whole team, you redirect the dots from your allies onto Blade. And if there's no DOTs to transfer, you can maybe apply some DOTs onto Blade instead, kind of like a mad scientist type of character. The most common support idea that people have mentioned is an HP buffing Harmony character. But I think aside from just buffing HP, having wind resistance penetration is a stat Blade desperately needs to be usable off element. But doing so would also buff Fei Xiao and other wind DPS characters. So just giving free wind resistance penetration is probably not the best way of doing it. Maybe some way of applying a wind implant like Silver Wolf and taking away the character's wind resistance would make Blade better without completely breaking Fei Xiao because creating the wind weakness isn't benefiting Fei Xiao as much because she can already shred universal toughness. But I think a far more interesting kit that won't buff already busted DPS characters is a harmony character that can buff teammates outgoing healing bonus so that Blade's follow-up attack can full heal him every time and then maybe have a damage buff that scales off of HP changes like Farina. So every time your HP fluctuates, you gain a buff depending on how much the HP changes. And because Blade has so much HP and he loses a lot and gains a lot, he'll get so much damage buff out of it. You can also have an ability that can share healing across allies, like the simulated universe abundance blessing, so that Blade can be your solo sustain character that constantly heals the entire team every time you follow up attacks. An idea for a preservation character is maybe someone who provides a similar skill such as the destruction blessing in the simulated universe that reduces incoming damage and divides it across all allies. This could be pretty good as well and maybe add some CC resistance so that Blade 
can reliably launch his follow-up attacks without being stunned. Lastly, instead of support character ideas, what if we thought of a potential planar ornament set for Blade? Some nice to haves would obviously be wind res down or defense down, but those planar ornaments would be completely busted on characters like Fei Xiao. So instead, maybe a planar ornament that buffs max HP and increases energy regen every time you lose HP. So this would allow Blade to get much more consistent ultimates. And then on top of that, to make this more a DPS set rather than a support set, you can give some sort of crit damage bonus every time HP is lost. Another potential interesting idea could be a planer that buffs HP and provides a taunt with some sort of offensive buff on it, like boosting your crit damage every time you get hit. This could work not only on Blade, but also counter-based characters like Clara and Yun Li. So it won't just be a Blade-only planer, it would actually be pretty usable on other characters as well. I know I've thought of a lot of other ideas as well, but they're not coming to me at the moment. These are ones I can think of off the top of my head. I'm curious to read what you guys think in the comments below. My personal favorite one that I really want to see in game is the harmony support that can buff outgoing healing bonus and share the healing and increase buffs depending on how much health has fluctuated. But if they decide to buff Blade some other way, that's totally fine with me as well. I just hope Blade sees any buffs at this point. So thank you guys for listening to my long rant on Blade. I love this character a lot. Blade was a main motivation for me creating this channel because I saw that no one was really making Blade related content. But it sucks to see Blade kind of get forgotten by the devs. He's clearly not at the level of some of his DPS peers at the moment. But I think there's so much potential in what Hoyo could do with Blade that it's frustrating to see none of it even being hinted at. I'll still continue to play Blade, just like I, I played Ito for so long in Genshin. But I've come to the realization that it's probably going to be more and more impossible for me to keep up with other content creators who do zero cycles or impressive clear showcases, just because the character I decided to dedicate my entire free-to-play account towards is not quite as strong as the other characters. But in the end, it is what it is. I play this game mostly for fun, and so the only thing I can hope for now is for a very powerful Blade support to come out or for me to find another character that I vibe with as much as Blade. Lend me your strength. A blade's edge knows no make good. The lost. <laughs>